Welcome to your fasting guide part three. In this video, you're going to learn how to successfully get through your DIY fasting mimicking diet, and more importantly, come out of it successfully, safely, and optimally, i.e. the refeeding portion. Now Longo recommends that you absolutely, on day six, do not have any meat and especially dairy. He stresses, no dairy. If you absolutely must eat meat, please choose seafood. He's all about the Mediterranean diet, and there's a lot of good reason for that. My recommendation is to stick to whole plants completely, and that's what he recommends too. He says on day six, we should just eat the exact same food that we have been eating all along the FMD, whole plants, but just increase the calorie intake. And then of course, now we get to, hallelujah, eat more starches, more rice, potatoes, more beans. If you're gonna have rice, then choose brown rice or more like a barley or a farro. White rice is not a deal breaker, but why not just have an optimal day of refeeding at least for 24 hours after your fast and reap all of the benefits? So I'll tell you, most people are doing this to lose weight and most people going through Longo's FMD lose about five pounds. Now, once you start refeeding, of course, some of that weight is gonna start coming back on. I'm in the middle of a DIY fasting mimicking diet right now, and I'm on day four. I've now dropped four and a half pounds. So I have all day today, all day tomorrow, and then by my day six morning, that's probably gonna look like six pounds in total. Now, typically I will drop about five pounds. Once I start refeeding or eating again, I will put on another two or three pounds. I do also see that my baseline weight continues to go down. If you're like me and your weight just kind of goes up and down, <laughs> the interesting thing is it can go up and down and up and down like anywhere three to five pounds, at least the baseline went from here down to here. <laughs> So that's exciting. If you lose about five pounds doing the FMD and you wanna keep that five pounds off and potentially even continue to lose more, the secret to that is to eat low fat whole plant foods. Not only is that going to help you keep that weight off, continue to burn fat if you've got the fat to burn on your body, but it is refeeding in the optimal way. So you are building so much nutrition and health inside your body. If your goal is to lose weight, that's gonna be hit. If your goal is also for longevity and overall wellness, ding, 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 let's just stop there because just those two are incredible outcomes and benefits of going through this and coming out of it in the best way possible. Now, we do something called the 10 day connect, only eating whole plant foods that are kind of low on the fat scale for 10 days and really connecting the food to how you feel. That's my plan anyway. There are a bunch of foods that are plants that happen to be very high in fat. Just avoid those if you are on a weight loss journey. So following the fast for about 10 days minus two meals because that's just my personal philosophy. I can't have so much strictness, right? Like those tight boundaries do not fare well for me. I can do that during five days, but the 10 days following, I need a little bit of wiggle room. So I've got two outings planned, that is it. In those two outings, I'm not gonna go balls out, but I'm going to have more high fat foods. So the high fat foods that we're going to stay away from 10 days following the five day reset are nuts and seeds, uh, and that includes peanut butters, cashew butters, almond butter, anything that is made with a nut. Nuts are very high in fat. They're super nutritious, of course, and we can have a little bit each day, but most people tend to go overboard with the nuts, especially the peanut butter. How can you not? It's delicious. So we're gonna avoid nuts just for 10 days. Any kind of oil, oil of course is the most fattening product and the most calorie dense food product on the planet. So we're going to do our best to avoid all oil. Even tofu and uh, tempeh is a little bit higher on the calorie density scale. So calorie density just means the amount of calories in a given weight of food. And so once you understand what those are, then it's amazing <laughs> how easy it seems to drop some weight. Check out the description because I will list out, in general, a list of those foods. So we're going to avoid nuts and seeds, definitely oil, and also breads, pastas, and other things that I would normally eat almost on a regular basis, but they are higher in calorie density. So in the 10 days following, we're going to concentrate our efforts on weight loss because that is the biggest complaint that people have. And 
where people want the most help, especially since in the last five days we have felt hunger pretty much for five days and we've been measuring our food and it's been a very careful and conscious process. Having the freedom to eat more food, not weigh our food, eat until we are comfortably full, like that fullness factor is is reset too. So that's, that's gonna help with um, keeping our weight down for the long term. I've made the mistake of starting the five day reset just pigging out. And I like to do this because I get scared. I get scared of the upcoming five days and I don't want to feel the pain of hunger. And so I tend to go a little bit overboard and just feed the face. Now, that's not what I recommend. I highly recommend that you start by increasing your intake of whole plant foods. So things like potatoes and brown rice or barley, farro, quinoa, oatmeal, that is the best way to ease into the five day reset. Okay, so what are the tools that you will need? First of all, you will need a weight scale, a food weight scale like this. It doesn't have to be that one, obviously. So anything that's going to measure your food, that is the most important tool. You're gonna need basic things like kitchen knife, a cutting board, a pot for a soup, or if you wanna just stir fry your dinners, a pan. And then that's about it because there's no cooking for breakfast or lunch, so that's nice. And then of course you're gonna need your ingredients that you're going to eat, all of your food. I would also recommend weighing yourself, especially if you're on a weight loss journey. It's really fun to just see how your weight drops day by day. And so, so far, I'm on day four. My visceral fat has gone down a point, which is very exciting. And my metabolic age has gone down two years. Ugh, that's my most exciting measurement. Can you drink coffee? Well, yes, you can. <laughs> Hallelujah, right? We can drink up to eight fluid ounces of black coffee every single day. And that means no cream, no milk, no sugar. Or you can have two cups of black tea or green tea, but no matcha green tea. You can have unlimited herbal teas. I still have my teas from Prolon. I've got so many. They pack in so many into their kits. So I've still got some of these, but no herbal teas with either ginger or turmeric because those are really powerful roots and they may take us out of the fasting state. But what if you get really desperate and you're really, really hungry and you really wanna have something to eat? You can have one stalk of celery or one Persian cucumber. <laughs> this is a pretty small Persian cucumber, but they say about five inches of a regular cucumber per day. So only if you get desperate. Try not to do that, but at least you have that as something. My recommendation is carbonated waters. So we're allowed to have sparkling water as long as there's no added sugar in it. So that tends to kind of like fill the belly up a little bit more. Water is unlimited. And for some people that's really good news, but for me, it <laughs> It doesn't tend to fill me up at all. So I need either like a hot tea. So I'll have either just hot water or I'll do a hot herbal tea or I will have a sparkling water. Those tend to help me a lot more than just basic water, but experiment and do what works best for you. Can you work out? I would recommend not doing that. You can absolutely move your body, go for a walk, go out in nature, smell that fresh air, go for a very leisurely bike ride, but do not work out. Do not play 18 whole rounds of golf. Do not do any like heavy lifting or hit like a hot yoga studio. We want to not only conserve our energy and our limited calories, I've also heard that if we work out too intensely, it may take us out of the fasting state, so. Take this week to just go easy on yourself. In the past, I've done very light yoga and it's really interesting because typically when I start working up a sweat, I start heating up in very specific areas in my body. And when I'm in a fasting state, it's very interesting because my entire body lights up. So my whole body heats up all at once. It's not concentrated to those normal areas where I get really hot, like typically my back and my head. Those are the first places that start sweating and during a fasting state, it's just like, push. everything is just like warm. Yeah, every single time. I will caution you, even sitting outside in heat. So when you look at Prolon's uh, materials, they will say like even driving long distances in very hot weather, they do not recommend. I have to agree with that because uh, during one fast, I sat on a beach for a few hours. I was in the shade, had a hat on, did not move around a lot. And I had my cold drinks and I was exhausted. I don't think I had ever been so exhausted in my life. I came home, passed out, and I think I had more energy after giving birth to our daughter <laughs> than after that day on the beach. So even lounging around 
in any hot weather is not recommended. So just stay in cool and comfortable environments. Can you work? Yes, you can absolutely work, especially if you have a desk job, <laughs> but feel free to work. A lot of people do it. You're just gonna have to like pack your lunches if you go into the office or going into the workplace. You can still hold meetings or do whatever it is you do as long as it's not something physically taxing. What if you can't stand one of the ingredients on the five day reset menu? You can always go into chronometer and punch in all of the food and make sure that all of the macro kick out as close as possible to Longo's numbers, or you can just simply replace it grams for grams. So if you, let's say, can't stand red bell peppers or mushrooms, then replace like, let's say, the 10 grams of mushrooms for 10 grams of carrots or for broccoli whatever you can stand. <laughs> Nuts, cashews, especially since they're so delicious. Cashews can be a huge problem for a lot of people because they're not able to just have one, right? You have one and all of a sudden, oops, the entire bag is gone. So if you can't trust yourself with nuts, because cashews are a high fat item, we wanna replace it with another high fat item. The only other item that will be applicable on our reset menu are avocados. So for example, for our snack, 18 grams of cashews can be replaced with 18 grams of avocado instead. So you can just do that. So you're a six foot man and you weigh over 200 pounds and I am like 5'4". Should you be consuming more calories during the FMD DIY style? When you look at the FMD kit, the official one from Prolon, there are no other options, whether you are that six foot tall man or a five four woman. So my answer to that is no, just stick to the program and that's it. If you would like to eat less calories than what's described in the five day menu, then that is of course up to you. You don't have to eat up to 1090 calories on day one or 725 calories on days two to five. On average, you know, we need about 500 calories a day to stay alive. <laughs> so please just make sure that you are eating at least that. And if you're okay, then do your thing. What if you go a tiny bit over? It's probably gonna be fine. I think that it will still work with that little bit of leniency, but overall, stick to the program. Can you prolong this after day five? No, don't do that. <laughs> I've heard Longo say not to prolong it, that we should not be in ketosis or the fasting state for too long, that there are some challenges and problems that can come out of that. So let's just stay safe and do this in, uh, with good intentions and just not push it. You can always do the reset again in the future and reap all these benefits. But I hear what you are saying. You probably are feeling amazing. Your energetic levels are different in a very good way, you wanna stay feeling this good, I will tell you how to stay this way. The key is to refeed well. So everything that I talked about in the beginning of this video, go rewind it, <laughs> go watch that, and just keep to eating whole plant foods that um, if you don't have a weight problem and you don't have a weight loss goal, then just eat anything that is a whole plant. That includes the nuts and seeds or dried fruit like dates. In order to have a great five-day reset, especially as I am in one right now, <laughs> the highest recommendation I can make is to give yourself space, be gentle with yourself, and pace out your meals pretty well. Some people say, well, I typically don't eat breakfast, so can I just pack my breakfast into my lunch and just have like one big meal midday, have my snack, and then have my dinner? You can do that. Alongo recommends for his FMD that we just have the breakfast, have the lunch, have the snack, and have the dinner. Within a span of 12 hours, you are kind of eating all of your food and you're pacing it out. Every few hours, you're getting some calories in, getting some energy in. The whole week becomes much more enjoyable. Drink plenty of water, get lots of rest. Make sure, if you absolutely can, to do this with a friend or with friends, plural. <laughs> right now, I'm doing this with two people who are 2,000 miles away, and it's just way more fun to do this together. Power in numbers. In preparing to go into a DIY fasting mimicking diet, make sure that you're also thinking about the refeeding part. I cannot stress enough how important it is to refeed properly. This is going to optimize your fast and make sure that all of that work that you've just done doesn't just get thrown out the window. Get some sprouts, yeah. Sprouts are one of the most nutritionally dense food products available to us and we love to grow our own sprouts at home. And so if you've not tried it, I highly recommend it. It's super easy and you can check that out. Good luck, you are going to do awesome.